I don't know how widespread Tinder use is. I don't know that much about Tinder, but when I first found out about it, I thought, well, they certainly named it properly because Tinder starts fires and it's a fire starter and not just sexually. These tech companies use manipulative strategies. I talked to an executive, I won't say which dating app this was, but he told Please me that do. some dating apps, <laughs> some dating apps will um, basically what they call, I think they're called seeding, where they'll put fake profiles of very attractive, usually women, right? Because men are, are actually more likely to use dating apps and they're, they're sort of more likely to pay for the premium profiles compared to women who don't have to because they're gonna get matches anyway. So anyway, the dating app companies, they'll seed them with fake attractive women profiles and intentionally match with men who have recently downloaded a new profile, basically newly created one. And the idea here is that if they, if they download the app and they immediately match with an attractive woman, and then they usually have a couple of conversational exchanges like, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? And then that's it. The, uh, the, the robot no longer responds to the user. But the reason why this is done is basically to give them a little hit. And so basically they called it uh, chasing the dragon, which is basically a term from drug usage, right? From heroin, you give them a little hit and then they're gonna be chasing that high for the rest of their lives. So, you know, I think that Jesus, so many complexities, evil. they are uh, creating a lot of heartbreak and a lot of frustration. That's really yeah. unbelievably appalling and malevolent. Well, I will say that if one app is doing it, then that means more than likely they all are. So it almost doesn't even matter. They're probably all doing some version of that because that's how they get users. So on Tinder, women, they like the profiles of only 4% of the men that they right. see on the app. Whereas for uh, men, when they see female profiles, they swipe right or like more than 60% they right. see. So that's really so worth concentrating on because that's a great example of hypergamy. So women mate across and up success hierarchies and men right. mate across and down. And the women like men who are about four years older, cross-culturally. They like men who manifest signs of success, as well as being handsome right. and personable and all of that. And the reason for that, as far as I can tell, is that they're looking to equalize the economic disparity that exists because women take a harder hit from sex and pregnancy than men. So they're looking right. to equalize that, and no wonder. They're looking for someone who's competent and generous, right? You want both of those. So competence would be intelligence, general cognitive ability, and the markers that go along with that. They want conscientiousness or openness, as well as other desirable personality traits. And they want generosity. But they're looking for someone who can provide. Well, it's not because they're greedy, precisely. It's because, well, they're going to put themselves in a more vulnerable position if they have a child. And even affluent women who have a child by themselves or who get divorced, tend to drop down the socioeconomic hierarchy a fair bit. So this hypergamy means women are much more selective in their mating than men are, and that's true cross-culturally. And it's not surprising because they pay a bigger price for sex. It's more dangerous for women because they can get pregnant, and it might be more dangerous emotionally as well. I believe that would be a reflection of their higher levels of agreeableness and higher levels of negative emotionality. So women do put themselves at risk more, and that might be why there's such a intense debate about what constitutes consent on campuses, despite these beliefs in polyamory and all of these things. But Tinder is a transformative technology, and it's radically underestimated yeah. in terms of its potency because it produces hyper-successful predatory males and reduces rejection. It eliminates rejection because, I mean, you can be totally rejected, in which case you're a failure on Tinder. But in normal pre-mating interaction, let's say, there's a high probability of rejection, especially on the part of males. I don't want to call every male who's successful on Tinder a psychopath. I'm not saying that. But I would say that if you're a successful polyamorous male on Tinder, and so that's going to be a very tiny subset of men, they're hyper-selected by women, a tiny subset of men who receive almost no rejection, they're set up to learn to be psychopathic because all their interactions with other people can be devoted to short-term sexual gratification with no emotional intimacy or long-term commitment. And that's a hell of a training ground as far as I'm concerned. So anyways, on Tinder, as you said, women select 4% of the men. Yeah. So that so, means- And I would imagine that 4% is very high up on what you're calling you know, the, the success hierarchy. I have a friend, good looking guy. Uh, he was very active on Tinder for a while and he accumulated more than 20,000 matches on the app. 20,000? Uh, 
20,000. And he was so successful right. that Tinder pinpointed him early on and gave him all kinds of free perks and bonuses and lifted his radius restrictions, gave him the Tinder Gold app or whatever version of it, basically trying to You're entice kidding. him to continue Tinder to use that. the app. These are unbelievably pernicious and vicious broad scale social experiments that are far more potent than anything like government policy. He's in Genghis Khan territory with 20,000 that records for athletes, for example, and movie stars. Some of yeah. the men have reportedly slept with thousands of women. Yes, Will Chamberlain and there's others who are in the same category, but there are men who have women throwing themselves at them all the time, lining up for them. And I've read biographies of people who had that sort of thing happen as well. But that's very, not very the typical male experience. I have no, the typical male experience is all rejection, nothing. right? So you see what's happening is that Tinder is one of the forces that's transforming monogamy into polygamy. And the problem yes. with polygamy is that it follows a Pareto distribution, like the distribution of wealth, is that some tiny minority of men get all the sexual opportunity and all the rest get virtually none. And that is a recipe right. for, for social instability. It's, it's even easier to cheat. So in the past, if you wanted to be unfaithful to your partner, it was risky because, you know, essentially like you had the same social circle, you had the same friends, everyone knew everyone else. But now with the apps, you can match with someone who is completely outside of your social reality, outside of your partner's social reality. You can have a very discreet rendezvous. No one will ever know about this. Ghosting has become more common. I don't know if you about ghosting, but it's no, basically where you're in a relationship with someone and after you have sex, you know, once or however many times, then you just vanish. You never see that person again. Delete them from your phone, block them on social media. You never have to see them again. And there's right. no so social cost real, to this. That's a real psychopathic conquest strategy, right? Yes. Because the psychopaths, it's, they tend to form relationships that are very predatory and then disappear. That way their reputations stay intact as long as they can continue to disappear. Well, the question would be what happens to you after you do that four or five times? You know, let's say you're not particularly psychopathic to begin with. It's like you learn what you practice. Look, if you're using people continually as a means to an end, and I think sex is probably the most effective way of doing that, then you're establishing a pattern of interaction between you and other people at perhaps the deepest possible level. And so if you do that repeatedly, you're certainly not engaging in anything that might be regarded as a meaningful or deep relationship. Quite the contrary, you regard that as excess baggage. That's an impediment to your next conquest, so to speak.